In this lecture, we will show that up to isomorphism, there is only one field of any given finite order. Uh, for this, we will use the fact that the multiplicative group of a finite field is cyclic. So, uh, suppose E, so theorem, if E and E prime are finite fields of order P to the N, then there exists an isomorphism from E onto E prime. And what's more, uh, this is sort of a trivial observation, but I just want to say it here, is that uh, this isomorphism will map the copy of Fp, which is, uh, you know, obtained by taking 1 and adding it to itself how many ever times, it lacked by identity on Fp. So, there is an isomorphism of field extensions E over Fp to E prime over Fp. Now, uh, the proof of this uh, is as follows. We will express E as a uh, as, uh, quotient of Fpt uh, modulo an irreducible polynomial. So, what we do is uh, we know that E star is the group generated by some element alpha. some non-zero element alpha generates this group and what this means is that E is the group generated by alpha, uh, the, the, the field extension of Fp generated by alpha. That is the smallest field containing Fp and alpha is all of E. And now uh, that means that uh, we can construct uh, homomorphism phi uh, from Fpt to E as we did in the first lecture of this course uh, which is uh, just takes phi of t goes to alpha. Then what we have is that uh, this phi gives rise to an isomorphism. Uh, so, we have F T mod P T to E P bar where P T is an irreducible polynomial and um, P T generates kernel of E. Okay, so E is isomorphic to Ft mod Pt. Now, this, uh, suppose we write, uh, so, so what we know is that phi bar of t is alpha uh, and so alpha is a root of uh, Pt in E. This means that the GCD of Pt and uh, t to the p to the n minus t. Alpha is also root of t to the p to the n minus t because the elements of e are precisely all the roots of t to the p to the n minus t. This is not equal to 1 in E t. But we have seen that this GCD does not actually depend on which, uh, uh, which uh, polynomial ring we are computing it over. If the GCD is not 1 in Et, it is also not 1 in Fpt. Okay, because both these polynomials are in Fpt and, uh, and so the GCD must also lie in Fpt. Okay, now let us move to the field E prime. So, since p t and uh, t to the p to the n minus t is not equal to 1 uh, and t to the p to the n minus t 
uh, splits into linear factors in uh, E prime. is a product of linear factors this means that uh, pt has a root in e prime in fact uh, one of those linear factors must also divide pt so, Pt has a root in E prime, call it alpha prime. And now you define Fpt to let us call this phi prime to E prime by taking T to alpha prime. Now, this uh, homomorphism must have kernel containing Pt because alpha prime is a root of Pt. But this Pt is a maximal ideal. I mean, the kernel cannot be all of Fpt because this map is obviously non zero, alpha prime is in it. And so, uh, this kernel phi prime has to be equal to Pt. And therefore, E prime is also isomorphic to Fpt mod Pt. And so, what we have is uh, Fpt mod Pt, this over Fp is isomorphic to E on the one hand via phi bar and isomorphic to E prime on the other hand via phi prime bar, which means that E and E prime are isomorphic via say phi prime bar circle phi bar inverse and that proves the theorem. What this is saying is that up to isomorphism, there is only one finite field of any given order. 